Hey folks, this is G from BeatSkills and I'm here to give you some very, very awesome information. I bet a lot of you are very, very curious as to how plugins work. So at some point in time in your life, I bet you've used plugins if you're a music producer or a musician or an engineer. There's just no way to avoid them, right? The challenge is the complexity of actually making some of your favorite software. So stay tuned and I'm going to share all of this information with you. <laughs> So as you know, there are two types of plugins. One is a virtual instrument and the other is a processing plugin. So processing plugin is something that takes a track or a signal and adds some kind of color to it or manipulates it in some way. For example, an equalizer, compressor, a saturation device, a delay, a reverb. A virtual instrument is something that you can actually play. So an instrument that can be performed inside the computer is a virtual instrument. Both of these are basically based on the same kind of coding. Uh, the processing plugins require what we call DSP processing and virtual instruments require sample playback. So these are two types of plugins. So let's get into the principles and what is the software that we actually use to code these plugins. We basically make our plugins on a platform called Juice. It is a framework designed for audio and video applications. This framework does not work on its own. It needs to be connected to some kind of a compiling software such as Visual C or Xcode on the Mac. In order to code plugins, you definitely need to have a very, very good experience coding firstly. So if you use Visual C or Java or Xcode, then you're good to go. If you don't, then it's going to be very hard doing such complex programs. The reason for this is that many of the virtual instruments or processing plugins are real time. They actually process the sound or the signal as the signal goes through it. Hence, there are various factors to take into account when writing code, especially for such DSP plugins. Another very important piece of software that we use is called MATLAB. So this is a brilliant DSP software. This is where we really create the algorithms. I can sometimes start with one of my favorite pieces of hardware and look at the architecture, the schematics, and also pass some test signals and impulses through the gear and capture the effect that analog processing has on that signal. And then what we try to do is try to replicate that processing in the digital realm via DSP or digital signal processing. After the DSP work is done, we try to make an interface which would be pleasant to the eyes and inspiring to the user. If you're interested in coding, I'm going to list a few books and some resources right after this video, which you can check out and begin your coding journey. So that's it, folks. That's how it's done. It sounds simple, but there's a lot of process and steps involved. I hope that was a nice glimpse into our world of beat skills and tone empire. And of course, if you have any questions, write below in this video and do like and subscribe because that helps us reach more people. So I'll see you guys in another video. Take care and enjoy the holidays.